there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to start off by using a jelly plate to create some prints today. I have some vintage photo distress oxide ink which I'm just putting a super little bit on my plate and I know that you can hardly see it but when I put down some of this grey, light grey cardstock you can see just a little bit. And I'm going to work with two sheets of cardstock here and one is kind of the mopping up one and one is going to be the, you know, main one that always goes first. So I often do this and I mean more than half of the time I find that the mop up one is the one that I like a little bit better. I also have some sort of blue chiffon colour here which is that really light, light blue colour. And then I have some metallic copper color and then a little bit of white. And these are just all acrylic paints and I used my finger to put some on because I wanted a really light layer. I'm wanting to create a sort of old, vintagey, antique looking vase. And so I want to create the um, paper to cut it out of. And so I'm just playing around and doing lots of different layers until I kind of get the look that I think I want. So you can see, sometimes I am going to put the whole piece of paper down. Other times I will kind of dab around, add a little bit more that might be left on my brayer. As I said, I kind of have one main piece and one sort of mop up piece. So I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. The oxides work really well on the gel plates from my experience anyhow. So as I said, I'm kind of just going for this sort of rustic-y, um, you know, like an old watering can sort of pot that has been sitting out, weathered, and that was the kind of gorgeous look that I was going for. So I am really just enjoying playing here. I didn't you know, have a, be in a hurry to get in an end goal really fast or quick. And I didn't have a perfect idea of what I wanted in my mind. So I was really enjoying this. Um, and also the card that I was making today, I knew that I didn't want to have a sentiment on the front because I had a couple of occasions where I just felt like there wasn't the right sentiment. I just didn't want to say words on the front. So I left it off altogether. So now I am putting a little bit more of a thicker layer of that same really, really light blue color on there. Just a nice even layer. And I'm just going to use a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, Nina Solar white paper. And this is what I'm going to use to put this print on. So this is going to create the background of my card. Before I was working on the vase or jar and now I'm working on the background. So you can see I get this really cool texture because I didn't clean my plate in between uh, the two projects. So I really like that kind of carried over look there. And when I was looking at these, I thought, yeah, I think I know what I want to do. <laughs> so I put down some of that uh, copper metallic color and then I have a bricks stencil here. Now I, taking that print that I just did one second ago, I am first going to put down a little layer here because I thought that I wanted this to be the table that the vase was going to sit on. So I wanted that to not have the brick pattern on it. So I'm masking that part off, popping it down onto my gel plate and then just using a scrap piece of paper behind it so that I don't get my hands completely covered in paint pull up everything and there's the print of the bricks and I must admit I was <laughs> not quite what I was after kind of okay but not quite what I was thinking so to clean up here I am adding a little bit more of the blue paint a little bit too much <laughs> but anyway I'm going to roll that in uh, over top I haven't cleaned anything off I just pulled that print off before and I just have a little scrap piece of paper beside me where I'm taking off a little bit of that blue paint. Then I'm putting down a completely clean piece of white paper. And again, putting a scratch piece over top. And this was really just to clean up the plate. And then when I turn this over, this was much more what I wanted. So this was kind of like a happy mistake. And that part there was like, yep, that's going to be my background. So I have these two pieces now and the one to the left was definitely what I was after more and then these two uh, grey ones that we did at the very beginning, I'm going to turn one over and then just draw a rough sort of shape of what I was thinking. Um, 
Now, if you have a dye or something else that you can, even a stencil that you might be able to trace around, then go for gold and use that. I didn't have anything that was going to be the right size for what I needed or even <laughs> remotely the same sort of shape. So I just drew my own and I'm going to cut it out. I drew it on the back so that you wouldn't be able to see my pencil lines. And then I am just going to cut out the inside of that handle as well. And then my shape is pretty much good to go. Now, don't ask me exactly what this is. I mean, is it a vase? Is it a like a, an old watering can was kind of what I had in mind, but it didn't quite turn out like that either. But it doesn't really matter. I really like the way that it came out and I really like the prints that we made using the gel plate. And that's what I love. It's very unexpected and it's not super controlled, uh, which is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I really like the outcome. So here I'm just going around and using a little bit of that vintage photo with a finger dauber and I am just kind of putting a little bit around just the very edges to kind of finish off the element. Now you definitely could have just left it uh, as we cut it out, you could leave it there for sure, but again it's just those little touches that sometimes add uh, a little bit more. So now I have these dies here, these are two flower dies and they are so cool because the outline exactly matches up with the finer detailed one. So, so that makes these flowers really good for all sorts of things. But today I'm just going to be using one of them and I'm going to cut out both the detail and the outline in this kind of navy blue cardstock. So I have the flowers there and then I cut out the just the detailed one in the gold as well. Now the gold is adhesive backed gold. And I actually just put a little bit of stick it adhesive on the back of this before I die cut it, which just makes life a little bit easier. So you can see there I'm just going to put the gold layer directly on top of the solid base layer. And then I'm going to use a little foam square, pop a tiny little foam square that I'm just going to cut up and put behind the navy blue detailed top layer. And I'm going to slightly offset that so you'll just be able to see hints of gold and you'll be able to see a little bit more gold when you kind of look at it from the side rather than looking at it straight down so I really like that look where the gold is kind of not right in your face but it just creates that extra little bit of shine and sparkle um, on a card that's not really kind of a shiny sparkly card so once I have all three of those flowers put together I mean, you could definitely add lots and lots of different things here. You could use some white gel pen and add a little bit of detail. You could add some glossy accents into the center. You could also add some enamel dots or some nouveau drops. I mean, there are lots of things that you could add to the center if you wanted to. I didn't want this card to kind of be super overwhelmingly shiny or sparkly or anything. So I chose to leave them off for the minute. So I've got my three flowers complete. And just on a side note, these dyes make really good shaker flowers. <laughs> that was my original idea, but it wasn't quite in keeping with my theme, but that can be for another video. Then I just have a scrap piece of um, sort of motley green, greeny beige paper here. And I'm just cutting some really, really random strips that are going to be my stems. You don't actually end up seeing these in the end at all. They are pretty much completely hidden, but at least I know they're there. And if anybody kind of peeks around the card, they'll be able to see them. So now it's just a matter of popping everything together. I have the layer of the navy blue cardstock, which is the same that we used earlier. That is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and so it will cover the entire card base. Then I have my jelly printed bricks, which I put glue on the back, and then I look at it when I turn it over and I'm like, ah, uh, I need to finish it. <laughs> so I put down my nonstick sheet because it does have the glue on the back, and I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the vintage photo, which is the same color that I did with my little vase. I'm just going to add a little bit around the outside. And again, I just feel like this kind of personally finishes it off. Again, something that you don't have to do at all. I add a little bit more glue and then I'm going to pop it down onto my layer. And it measures just shy of about four by five and a quarter. Then I just have my little vase sitting here. It's not glued down. I'm going to include three of my little stems where I think I roughly want them to go. I mean, as I said, no one kind of ends up seeing these anyway, so it doesn't really matter uh, what they look like. I'm not putting much effort into them at all, but they're roughly where I want my three flowers to go. 
Then on the back of my vase, I'm going to pop it up using a little bit of foam tape and foam squares, just whatever you have on hand, it doesn't matter at all. I'm going to make sure that I've also got a few little foam squares cut up that will go around the handle as well so that it's nice and supported and it won't dip down at all if I send this card through the mail. So once I have all of that on, I'm going to pull off all of the release papers and then sit that right at the bottom of my card. And then from here, all I need to do is add on my flowers. Now I was going to put them all nice and flat and I do end up doing that with the first two. I just add a little bit of liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. And then when I get to that third one, I decide that I'm going to pop it up on a little foam square just because it sits up above the others nicely. And here is where I was looking at the card and I really, really like it. However, I was itching to do one thing to it. <laughs> so I was deciding whether it was worth it and I really, really wanted to add a few finishing touches. So here I am going to use my white gel pen and add a little bit to some of the flowers, a little bit to kind of each one of the petals. And then I end up going around pretty much all of the vase with the white pen as well. And then again, as I said, I was itching to do one more thing. So I am going to risk it and I am going to go over the whole entire vase with some glossy accents. Now to kind of get there properly, I did pull off that bottom flower, but I can pop that back on later. I go around the very outside of the whole vase and then I fill it all in with the glossy accents. Now this does not kind of take as much as you think it would, but here is the dried product. So this is, I did leave it overnight uh, because I was doing it late one night. So this is kind of about 12 hours or so later and it is very, very cool. I love the end product and I love all the shine on the buzz and it's a nice, easy card with no sentiment, perfect for the occasion that I need it for. I hope you enjoyed this process today. Let me know what you guys think and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye.